Right, everyone, I think, yeah, let's just get started. And what I'll do is as people come, I'll admit them into the waiting room, you know, from the waiting room. So welcome and thank you for joining me today. Um, mom guilt really is a thing. And as I was preparing this uh, webinar today, I was so excited because I thought, oh, I just wish someone had taught me these things when I was a young mom and had gone through this kind of stuff with me. I just... It was just so thrilling for me to be able to prepare it and share it with you. So uh, when we ditch mom guilt and we remove it from our lives and these unrealistic expectations that we set upon ourselves, I really believe that we can truly, truly live more alive than we've ever lived before. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just something that I think as, as moms, we really struggle with it. Last night, my husband and I were chatting. We had a friend around who came to stay with us for the night around the dinner table and he was saying, yeah, no, guilt is really not a thing he thinks dads deal with as much. Probably they deal with regret much more than we deal with regret because they're so focused on things that they feel like they've missed out. But mom guilt is a thing. And this mom bursts out laughing. She's like, yes, Mandy. I mean, you know it, hey? Mom guilt is just something that we struggle with. Um, but before we get into it, I just want to share, some of you do know a bit about me and who I am. But... Um, just some pictures about who I am. So I'm a mom to two teens, and that was in the first picture. And I've done workshops, parenting workshops across the world. So if you look at the bottom, you'll see uh, this picture recently from a book launch that I did in Port Elizabeth. Um, in the middle, oh, the her face image isn't screened out, but <laughs> there's a lady, um, Jordan, that I did some workshops with some women in Jordan, and uh, the one on the right is I uh, ran some parenting and women in leadership workshops in Ghana. Um, at the top, I regularly speak on radio, and um, this one here in the middle is of a lady uh, who was watching a masterclass. They sent me the picture of her watching it on her screens, and um, just one of the moms recently that's been on the course that I did a one on one coaching. So I've been involved in, with parents and with women for over 20 years, encouraging them to live fully alive. I regularly speak on the radio on living with courage and fearless parenting. So, so yeah, so mom guilt is just um, something that I've had to deal with over the past while, and I've worked with some moms on it. But just that you could see a little bit more snapshot of my life. Um, I had to really figure out how do I move through, you know, the places I've traveled to and the people I've worked with. Um, just but just giving you guys a snapshot. So I, I'm really here to empower and parents to raise world changers. It's an intentional journey, and I'm really interested in helping moms go on a personal transformation journey as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing of all is that I'm a mom to two teens, and I love families. I love children. Um, I really believe that being a mom is our highest privilege and greatest honor. And um, whilst it's not the only thing we do, it's definitely our highest calling. So I've battled with mom guilt over the years. I don't know if you have, but every mom I've chatted to has battled with it. Uh, if you have ever felt like, yo, I'm not doing enough. Um, I'm not available enough. Um, you know, it's just this word, like I should be doing more and, and more enough and all these kind of things. And mom guilt is something that's very real. And the phrase that epitomizes it for me is I don't want to mess my children up. I've had moms literally say that exact same phrase to me. I don't want to mess my kids up from because of what I've been through as a child, my experiences, where I live, the things I'm involved in, the work I'm doing. I just feel like it's not enough. So I don't know if you can relate, but if you can, I'm sure, you know, you can either give me a thumbs up or just let me know. But this is mom guilt is just something that I want to set you free from today. Uh, it comes from our past experiences, it comes from our personal insecurities, from pressure, from family, from friends, from social media. One mom that I've been working with lately, she said to me that um, she's actually taken Instagram and Facebook off her phone because her child um, has some special needs and she just keeps on feeling like the, the other mothers, they, the kids are hitting the milestones and it's just it's not helping her it's not making her feel good and so um this mom just really yeah laureen's just saying same for me also off social media yeah i think so you know i think mom guilt is just something that we that we all have to deal with sorry guys i'm just admitting someone while we we're chatting welcome 
Um, welcome, Lorraine. So yeah, we, we're chatting around mom guilt and not feeling enough. So simply put, mom guilt is just that common feeling of not doing enough as a parent, of not being available enough, of not doing the things the way you think they should be done, of making decisions that may mess your children up in the long run. And it shouldn't be like that, moms. It really, we shouldn't be living like that. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some five tips on how to walk free from mom guilt. And then I'm going to give you, a, like I call it Mandy's four-step four technique of just getting rid of it. And, and then also I'd love to just answer some questions if you have any of them along the way. And hopefully when we come away today, you will walk away feeling like a load has been taken off your shoulders, feeling like you can smile a little bit broader and you're able to connect with your children a little bit more and be more comfortable in who you are and who you may to be. So let's start at the beginning with us. So uh, five tips to let go of mom guilt. Um, I kind of had a plan that these would all slide in as they go, but obviously it doesn't quite work out that way. So don't let anyone should on you. Um, that is something really big. I remember when my son was newborn, so Matt is 20 now, and I struggled to breastfeed him. He just couldn't suck properly. And I had so much pressure from parents out there that that was the only way that I could feed my son. And at the risk of him even getting dehydrated because I wanted to do what every other mother told me I should be doing, but it just didn't work out for me like that. But I struggled with the guilt and I thought, oh, my son is now gonna struggle with all these things. And it just really wrecked me. It robbed me a lot of, of a lot of the joy of having a newborn. And that's what mom guilt does, it robs us of joy. Um, a few years back, I was in Switzerland and I met this lady on the edge of Lake Geneva. I was attending a conference and she's a bit older than me and I struck up a friendship with her. Actually, to this day, she's from Canada and we saw in contact and we were just talking and she said these words to me, Mandy, don't let anyone should on you. And that's what I'm telling each of you today. Don't let anyone put that pressure on you to do something, to be something to, you should be doing this. You should be cooking this kind of food. You should have your child enrolled in this activity. You should be living this kind of life. Take that pressure off. Um, because what it does is when we start to believe this should, I should, I should, I should, it breeds discontent, it breeds comparison, and it sets you up for despair because it puts these unrealistic expectations on us as moms that we just can't get to that level. And that's not how God intended us to live. He doesn't want us to live with that. He didn't put that pressure on us. And I don't think we should allow our friends or ourselves to do the same. Tip number two is different is sometimes just different. Uh, a great life lesson to learn is that families are different. Every family has their own culture, the way they're made up. Uh, what my family does is different from a different family. And that's okay. Sometimes different isn't bad. It's just plain different. And, and then when we realize that as a mom, we, we are okay with that. So if your child is interested in something that's very different from his friends, that's fine. It's just different. And so when we, that also stops us from comparing because when we teach our children that as well, we can celebrate our differences. It, let, it just releases things and it lets you go. So I think that is definitely something that we could grab hold of is just realizing my family and even my family values might be different from yours and that's okay. I don't have to have the same type of family as you in order for us to be friends or to get on. So that also releases that pressure of that guilt of us. The third tip I want to give you is giving yourself permission. So moms, this is where you allow yourself permission to say it's okay to take a nap. You know, if you need a nap, have a nap. You, you wake up as a better mom for it. It's okay to develop yourself. If you got to a stage where your kids aren't as demanding on you and you have some extra space and decide, oh, I want to study, do it. Um, I met a mom the other day, her children are out of home. And I said to her, she's probably in her like mid fifties or so. I said to her, oh, you know, what are you up to? What do you do? And I hadn't met her before. It's the first time I was chatting to her. She said to me, I'm first year varsity. So I looked at her. I was like, okay. She said, yeah, I'm studying art. I have always wanted to study art. And so I've enrolled myself and I'm first year <laughs> and I'm going for it. And I thought, wow, that is just so incredible. 
So there's a few permissions, you know, permission to go out with your friends, permission to enjoy a different routine, permission to just enjoy the day. Give, you know, often we get so stuck in, we've got to have this perfect house, we've got to have all of this in order. And I want to free you moms to say, like, have that permission to just do what you need to do. Permission to just let things go, to not have the perfect house, to not have it all together. When we allow ourselves that permission, it just frees our brains up, our minds up to think, and it also frees us up to not have that guilt. So when your kids come home and you've had a nap, for example, to just say, yeah, I needed a nap, you know, or um, I, actually, I remember during lockdown, my, somehow, I don't know why, what happened, but my kids were out of home, Neil was somewhere, I don't know why I was alone, but suddenly I was alone for a little bit, and I was quite surprised, because you know, I hadn't been alone for a while. And I was like, oh, it's raining. <laughs> you know, I should be doing housework. What should I do? And I thought, oh, well, I have a fire going. It's raining. So I made some popcorn, got some chocolate and watched a movie <laughs> in the middle of the day. And I think it was actually when Emily went back to school. And I, I, yeah, I just caught myself having this gap of like two, three hours. And I just thought, you know what? I'm not, I'm tired of doing housework. I'm just going to do that. And it was such a joy that when my kids came back and Neil was around, I really was such a better person for it. So I want to encourage you, give yourself permission to do the things that you need to do. Because that leads into number four. The fifth, fourth tip is taking care of yourself is taking care of your children. It's okay to take care of yourself. I mean, obviously not at the expense of your family, but taking care of yourself is an important thing to do. It's um, when we learn that we are as important as our children, that we don't need to give them a very last mouthful or that you are entitled to the food. I don't know about you, but I found I dish up for everyone else first and then you're like, oh, okay, well then it's for me. And some moms are much better at it than ours. I'm kind of a recovering <laughs> person at doing this, but learning to care for myself um, means that I'm a better mom to my children, I'm a better friend, a better wife. Um, some of you know my story, but when I had to deal with the on robbery and the trauma of overcoming that, I really struggled with this. And when I started to learn to care for myself and care for the different areas of my life that I needed it, I was able to heal and grow. So I really want to encourage all of you in that. Um, so I just want to pause at this moment. Um, if anything stands out to any one of you, let me know, um, because I'm going to go into the four-step dish, the mom guilt method. And, and we're going to chat a little bit around that. But yeah, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone um, have any comments? Can you relate to some of what I'm saying? You know, what are the areas, some of the areas that you feel guilty in? I know some of the myths that moms believe is, first of all, I mentioned that we'll mess our kids up. Secondly, is that I'm a, the worst parent around, that, you know, I'm not available. I'm really not a good mom. And the third myth we often believe is that we have to have all the answers and we don't. You know, we, we don't, we can, there's ways to find out answers. But what do you think are some of the myths and can you relate to anything what I shared? I'd love to hear from you. You're welcome to unmute or just make a comment in the chat box. I like the fact that you, it's okay to take care of ourselves and it's okay to have time to enjoy ourselves yeah it's something that at times struggle with like uh you have a random free moment and you're like okay what needs to be done what needs to be done yeah naomi i agree with you thank you <laughs> lorraine said sometimes it feels like everything you do as a mom is wrong according to my boys that is well lorraine i'm here to tell you it's not wrong you know you are um you are a good mom and um, yeah, our kids sometimes make us feel like that. So I want to take that pressure and ditch that mom guilt off you. Anyone else? You know, what I yeah, you know what I sometimes get annoyed with is like for instance in the morning, like the breakfast run and whatever, I just find like our family just kind of expects to be fed, my husband will like dish up for himself and make himself breakfast. And I'll be like packing the dishwasher out and going like a mad person. And, like, everyone's just kind of having a great morning and everyone's eating and I haven't eaten breakfast until I drop the kids off at school and I get back. I don't know if anyone else has it. And then I'm like, what, the, what the heck is going on? Where's my life? I mean, it's not, oh, the kids are getting bigger now, but 
I, like, I remember getting like, especially in the time of the months when you get like resentful actually towards the situation. Mm. So I think I've started to try and actually, well, as you know, Mandy, I wake up earlier now and get my life sorted out. So by the time the children are down, yeah, um, I feel fresh again, you know, but it really has made a massive difference. So yeah, anyone out there feeling like that, just do what I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get up a bit earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that's worked for you Green. <laughs> that's really worked for me <laughs> I'm so glad I really am so glad so thank you for sharing yeah I mean I remember still I catch myself having to feed the kids or feeding everyone else first and then realizing oh you know I need to look after myself and I think that's the difference we sometimes believe this lie that we are at the bottom of the list anyone else want exactly. to share anything yeah I see Celeste has joined us. Welcome, Celeste. We're just chatting around uh, ditching mom guilt. And um, we've been chatting about not dating anyone should on you. Different is just different. Giving yourself certain permissions and taking care of yourself is taking care of your children. So, yeah, I mean, I think, Lorraine, you hit the nail on the head. And Lorraine as well. You know, we often just believe all these other things instead of thinking, what do I need so that I have enough capacity and enough margin in my life? So I want to dive in to um, how to take these four steps. So that's kind of what I'm calling it's um, Mandy's four steps to ditch mom guilt. And uh, I'm just trying to move this thing around so that I can see. There we go. So you're welcome to write this down. I can send you the recording. Um, but even as I'm talking, maybe some of the stuff might come up in your head and go, okay, well, I feel guilty about this. So if you have a pen and paper handy, I want to encourage you, write it down. Um, so first step, write down everything you feel guilty about. Okay, so it could be, I feel guilty that I'm not enrolling my kids in enough extramural activities. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it is. We, um, we had our son in a really, and daughter in a very sporty school uh, before we moved to Cape Town. And the pressure on, a, on the grade ones was so high that they had to do all these extramurals so that when the time came for cricket or uh, tennis or whatever trials it was to make the sports teams, if they hadn't done extra lessons, they would have fallen behind and they wouldn't have made it into any of the teams because all the other kids. So there's this unspoken pressure from parents in the school. And we kept saying, we should have our kids in this and we should do this. And when we moved to Cape Town, our kids were in a different school. Um, it was a co-ed school, not a sporty. And suddenly this pressure lifted off us. And I realized like we had felt some guilt around we should be doing certain things or not doing certain things. So even as I'm talking, what are the things that you feel guilty about? Um, I should be feeding my kids less cookies and more fruit. <laughs> I should be... Um, you know, doing, I don't know, whatever it is, it's different for different moms. Maybe if you have the courage, share with me and let me know if there's anything you ever feel guilty about um, that you sh should or shouldn't be doing. And then look and ask and say, should I feel guilty about this thing? Um, most of the time, you'll probably be able to answer no. Um, so, for example, I should be... Um, like one of the moms, for example, said to me, I want to feel better about myself as a mom. I'm tired of feeling guilty about needing some me time. So she's saying I should have more mom time or time alone. I feel guilty if I take time alone. So I shouldn't be able to be on my own. So she feels guilty about that. Should she feel guilty? No. You know, we often postpone hair appointments, exercise times, taking it slow because our kids need it or... Um, and like Laureen said, resentment starts to grow and that's not a good thing. So then after that, the third question you ask yourself is what can I do to change this? And then you action your first step. So once you've made a first step, what can I do to change this? It might mean not canceling your hairdressing appointment. It might mean putting certain boundaries around your life in different areas. Uh, it's different for different moms. What can you do? And then you action that step. And so there's different ways you can action it. First off, you could obviously write it down and then do it. You could, secondly, you could tell someone, this is what I need to do, and then actually do it. Thirdly, you could get a coach. You could have an accountability partner. Um, there's different ways. You know, you can write up and put it on a notice board or inside your cupboard. You know, to, I need to da-da-da-da-da. 
but there's different things that we can do as moms to get rid of the guilt. So this is a practical handle. If you're feeling guilty about things and saying, I should be doing this more or I should be like this, well, you know, let's not. So let me give another example. I should be feeding my kids healthier food. Um, and let's say you don't give them really bad food all the time, but like lately things have been just so hectic that they're eating toast and jam for supper for a few nights in a row. I mean, should you feel guilty about this? I would say no. Well, what can you do to change it? Well, do you need to look at time management? Do you need to look at how you schedule your meals, the plans that you have uh, for meal time? Do you need to work on your budget? I don't know. What, what could be your first step? And then you take it from there. Um, again, I just want to pause here. Does anyone have any comments or want to say anything or give any ideas as to what they think they could do? You ladies are quiet today. Mm. Okay, well, then I'm just going to carry on. Okay, so those are the four steps that I have in mind for you um, as you learn to ditch mom, mom guilt. I found that once I've worked through that, once I've worked through the mom guilt, that I'm not the altogether mom, that I don't have everything perfect and everything together, I really feel so much more free. And when we're carrying less burdens on our shoulders, we're less stressed, we probably have less tension in the muscles in our shoulders. We smile more and our kids will thank us for it. And I think our future selves will thank us for it. So I would love to just encourage you to give yourself those permissions that I spoke about earlier. Permissions to have a nap, permissions to develop yourself, permissions to see your girlfriends and have, you know, develop friendships, be in deep, meaningful relationships, permission to make mistakes. We all make mistakes as moms and that is something that, that we have to deal with. It's um, when we feel guilty, it really robs us of the joy of today. Um, it robs us of how we meant to live and the things that we need to do. Um, and guilt and fear go hand in hand, moms. I really feel that very strongly. When we, and many of you might know, I speak a lot into that, but when we start to parent out of fear, when we start to re react and we really get so closed in it hurts our lives and then we start to feel more guilty because now i'm reacting i'm shouting at my kids i'm not managing my time well i'm not coping and and it just doesn't set us up for for joy for deep relationships and for success we're not meant to live with fear we're not meant to live with guilt we're not meant to parent with fear or parent out of guilt and i think as mom society puts a lot of pressure on us that we have to be a certain way and have it all together and we don't your kids really want you to be you, to be the mom that you meant to be, to love them, to help them grow through the ages and stages. And if you have teens, to help them make it through the teen years and keep that connection and keep that relationship. Um, I keep having that goal. Even now, as my son's about to turn 20, I keep thinking, okay, what does Matt need from me now so I can keep this relationship with him? How do I start praying for his future spouse? How do I, or I have been, but how do I keep speaking life over him how do I do those things? So, um, yeah, Naomi said, I'm struggling with having girl time. So, yeah, Naomi, I mean, that's really real for you. She's got a, a newborn, a couple months old and a, a young boy. So, yeah, that is tough. How could you make it happen? That would be my next question. What step could you perhaps take? Could you chat to your husband or someone to say, give me a, and 45 minutes to go have a cup of coffee with a friend? Um, but yeah, there, there are ways that we can make it work. I think when we start to realize that we do need that, then we can start to action it. So we've chatted through quite a few things. We've chatted through the, some of the myths, some of the lies we believe that we need to have it all together, that we need to have all the answers. We've chatted through um, the, you know, the main thing about mom guilt is we don't want to mess our children up. And I think the root again of that is fear. When we don't want to mess our children up, we then parent from that place and it's not a healthy space to parent from. Um, so yeah, and then I've given you some steps and some handles, some tips. So when you grab hold of these, as I was preparing, again, I said to, in the beginning, I was so excited. Um, when you grab hold of these, then I know that um, you'll be able to really walk into greater freedom. I see just there's one more comment in the chat. 
There's a fear of missing out on moments. I agree totally, Naomi. There is that fear. And I think when we know we're around our children often, but we need those 40 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour by ourselves, we need to let go of that fear so then we don't have to know that we're going to miss out. So, but I agree with you. That is a very, very real thing. And I also battled with that. Um, so, yeah. So that's what I have to share with all of you today. I hope that it encouraged you. And I hope that you came away inspired. Um, some of you have already been on my parenting course and some of you know um, what I'm about to share now. But please use what I've shown, how to ditch mom guilt today, apply it in your life. Let me know if it's made a change, if it's helped you, if it has inspired you to walk free and give yourself permission. Um, I'm going to be sending you a, a PDF for 10 P like steps, or not 10 steps, but 10 ideas on how to walk free. It's a free PDF and um, I'll be emailing that through to you afterwards. Um, sorry, Lorian and Mary Lou said, I'm going back to work after four years. I feel guilty. Got a four, a two-year-old and a four-month-old. I need to do something for my mental health. Yeah, Mary Lou, I think that is very real and that is important. And you are important enough to take care of your mental health. Um, so if you'd like to schedule a call with me, Mary Lou, I'm happy to just talk it through for 15 minutes, give you a practical handle on how you could take a few steps to do that. And um, Lorian, thanks, Mandy, so inspiring. Feels good to know that other moms feel the same way I do. I agree with you. You know, Lorian, when we don't feel alone, then we know, okay, I can deal with this. And that's one of the things I love. Um, Naomi was on my mom's, my parenting course that we actually finished last week, Thursday. And one of the things I loved about it was that we were from different countries, different cultures, different communities, but we realized we weren't alone and we could share with one another. Uh, one of the moms actually phoned me this morning and said, Mandy, I can't believe we're not meeting this Thursday. I'm really going to miss seeing everyone's faces. And I thought, wow, like in a couple of weeks, how you could create community. That's just something um, it doesn't happen very easily, and especially in this time and especially over technology. So Lauren, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You know, when we know we're not alone, we're not facing these guilt and these issues alone, then we can handle it. And Mary Lou, I think for you, you know, please um, just go to mandyheart.net forward slash free events um, and book a, a free no obligation course. What you do is you go there, you'll see this page. It's a little bit lower down. I had the notification for this webinar above it. Um, and then if you click on book your appointment now, it will take you to this Calendly link. And, um, and then you just pick a time based on your diary, what would work with you. And we have a WhatsApp call or a Zoom chat. Um, so it's totally free. But I would love to chat with you and see how I could support you and encourage you. I hope that today was an inspiration and you walk away feeling freer and a little bit lighter. Um, I'd love to hear your stories. Please, can you just reply to me? Send me an email and say, hey, man, this is what I took away from today's um, webinar. This is how I think it could help me. Um, I'd love to hear your stories. But I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon further. And I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer um, to answer some any questions that anyone might have. Um, but if you need to go, Thank you for joining me and I'll be in touch and I'm going to be running weekly webinars, by the way. So just keep checking back on my pages and you'll be able to see, you know, what topics I'm doing. Um, and I'll be able to definitely encourage you in different areas. And if you have an interest, by the way, on a specific topic, please, please let me know um, that I could perhaps speak directly into where you have a need. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. and. God bless. Thanks, Laureen. Yeah, you said I don't really feel too guilty over the last few years. So that's, that's a good thing. So I'm doing better. That's amazing. That's really awesome. In the early days, maybe more. Yeah. Thanks, Mandy. It's been really helpful. And uh, thank you for the last chat we had. Uh, the gardening is going well and I'm learning to make more time for myself. Oh, I'm so glad, Naomi. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so thrilled for you as well.